Day, or maybe two, maybe three, but one at least, so you can tell your story now. Oh, like you're it. such a man of your word and generous and open. I am. There's a constancy to the dark energy. I don't think of you as dark energy. Well, that's what I think of you as bright energy. Bright energy. Yes. Mm. The shining star. Is this part of your time, Mike? No, no, okay. Okay. Never mind, okay. Okay. Let's get to it. Yeah, we don't okay. have much time. No, no. So this is a story I've told, and I'm beginning to understand it better now. It's, it could be said, um, what not to do. This could be the title. If you want to f steal your family's inheritance. Yes, it's about your brother. Yeah, there are three things you should be careful about if you want to succeed in doing this. Not stealing your family's. No, if you want to steal them, you should do these three things that he didn't do. Ah, it's a cautionary didn't. tale. Oh, you want to help your brother out? Help, help at this late day. If people want to steal family inheritance, this is this is a cautionary tale. You know what they say about the family jewels, don't you, Mikey? What do they say? They say the dark energy down there. Oh, my. Well, these were family jewels. Down there. These, Thornton. These were family jewels. Yes. So my brother had a great plan. You know, you can... I once um, heard that someone sent away for a guaranteed way. It was late night television. You would like mm -hmm. it's about three in the morning. Mm -hmm. Can you get up? When I get up, I can This is a it. guaranteed plan to get rid of cockroaches. Ooh. Cockroaches, bed bugs. So I, I, so I'm thinking of bed bugs. I'll, I'll identify with him. So I sent away. Mm -hmm. And I got for just nineteen ninety five. It's a deal. Nineteen ninety five. That's a deal. Including shipping and handling. Is that more than your inheritance or less? Uh, uh, well, it would have been more if I, my brother had succeeded. Oh, oh, it's a good thing you spent. You got to spend money to make money. That's what they say. So this plan, and I and I and I get in the mail to guarantee to kill all cockroaches in your house, and there were two boards. Two boards. And instructions. Instructions is about the boards, yes. Place cockroach <laughs> on top of board, lower board. Board A, let's board go. Board A and press board B into board A. I understand. I get the picture. It's a squishy <laughs> kind of picture. Yeah, so that was the, that was, and my brother. This had, is a metaphor, I think. I think oh, we're talking a metaphor here. Could be. So my brother had a good plan. Yes, it, it wasn't that. It wasn't. He but was, it was, four it was like this. You can get it. At three, you should check it out. Three okay. in the morning. Nineteen ninety-five. Oh, yes. yes. To um, get my mother declared incompetent and have her sign before she did this that he and he alone is in charge of all the money. Wow. And so we had my poor Parkinson's mother. With Parkinson signed this and didn't tell either of either of the other two brothers. Wow! So it was a great this is a, this is a Machiavellian Machiavellian family. Yes, he said it was the worst three years in his life because he started this. He must have been thinking about it even longer when my father died, and then he got my mother to sign this. Wow! Um, probably not long after my father's funeral. Maybe even during, for all I know. Wow. So, but these were the three mistakes he made. Three mistakes. So this is number one. Cautionary tale. Cautionary tale. It was very important to be patient with the timing. Uh-huh. Because he had to get, you know, he had to get my mother declared incompetent. 
Uh -huh. And she couldn't die because if she died, all the money would be split between the three brothers. Uh -huh. She had, had a really it was a very challenging, really. If you, uh, if you, your brother's a very sensitive person, right? Because if you waited too long, she would die on you, and then yes. you know, all the whole plan would I be get done. It. I get it. I get it. So he, his timing wasn't great. Uh huh. Because she died already before. No, she no, said, no, no. Oh, okay. He. It was very tricky because he had to get. He had two doctors who he hired. Wow. Go to Sarasota. And they asked my mother, um, who's president? And she said, Roosevelt. Roosevelt? Yeah. That was before or after Roosevelt was president? Yes, that was, she said that, she said that in, 19, in the 1990s. Oh, he wasn't president then. No, thank you. You would, you would have passed. Uh, I, I would have done well. <laughs> I would have done well on this test. So the, these two higher doctors said, Evelyn Corn's incompetent. Oh, wow. So then he immediately, as soon as he submits this, so she'd already signed over the... Well, if she's declared, she didn't know this, if she's declared incompetent, she didn't even know she was declared incompetent. Uh-huh. But he now had control of the money. Because she had... Signed that if oh, I'm declared oh, incompetent, okay. my beloved youngest son, Scott, can control wow. the money. The beloved. Yes. I remember that beloved. So this was mistake number two, which you should this you remember. I, this, is, this is just like dark energy. Mistake number two is he didn't check what the financial institutions would do once he had control of the money. Oh. One of them didn't tell us anything, Merrill Lynch. They just uh -huh. kept sending us the statements as usual, because the money was still there. Uh -huh. But Fidelity should have checked. Fidelity sent us a statement saying there was no money in my mother's trust fund. Wow. Why? Because, Did he take it out? Well, just because he was now in control of it, they created a new, a new account. Oh. And he didn't check that out carefully enough. Uh-huh. Because then we would have never known when she oh, would have Oh, and he would have succeeded yeah. in his plan. Yeah. And he would have had an Indian wife. He could have gone to India with all the money. And wow, and just like fighting. that guy who ran the jewelry store in Harvard Square that became Starbucks. Yes. Yes. An Indian, Indian guy owned a jewelry. And he fled to India with all the money. Oh, my. So, yeah, my brother married a lovely woman from India, Manipur, near China. So that was, that was a mistake, though. He didn't, he didn't check that. If, if he yes. Yes. old fidelity. You would have checked it, Mike, if it uh, was you. I wouldn't. Uh, no, I wouldn't at all. Oh, okay. And the number, the Your third. Your time is getting n nigh, Mikey. Oh, it doesn't count if you're. Yes, it No does. way. Yes. I want to finish the story. <laughs> well, you better hurry up. No, I can't. The third, you better hurry up. The third thing <laughs> is, which we're not, maybe not doing now. He made a mistake because he was he wasn't nice enough. He wasn't nice enough. And if you want to steal your family's inheritance, you should be nice. So I call him up mm -hmm. and I say, Scott. Scott, yeah, I bet that was his name. That was his name. I say, oh, good. Scott, what happened to the money in Fidelity? Wow. And he could have said, well, there was a glitch, but you'll see next month you'll get the regular statement. Instead, yeah. he says, I'm not making this up, Melas. I lied to you. <laughs> but I'm going to take all the money. I deceived you. I betrayed you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Wow. Now, why would he say that? Wow. Because he... he must have been very angry. Because he, he wanted... To, I don't know why he would say that. Why do you think he said that? Did you hate him? Did he I hate did, you? I think when... I was his mother and father. I was his only really loving parent. My other two parents had run out of loving parenting after yeah. my brother, after <laughs> me alone. <laughs> so I, he used to come. We, and he was fun. We had fun together. He, when he was about four, he'd come when I'm sleeping and he'd say, Mike, are you asleep? <laughs> or are you awake? <laughs> Let me know. I don't want to wake you up. Well, how are you doing? Sounds like your family. Mm -hmm. might yeah, so. And um, once when he was scared in his room, I took an old um, socket, light socket, which had all these wires coming mm -hmm. out of it. And I said, as long as we have this in the room, nobody can come in and harm you. 
Wow. And I had a my, talisman. And I had my friend come over and he, he, he tried to go into the door and, and mm -hmm. I told him to stop and he stopped and my brother felt much more. Wow. So he felt safe enough to cheat you all out of your money. Apparently. And we used to have fun. We would go to the movie theater and we'd come down from opposite balconies down the stairs and see each other from across the room and yell, Scott, Mike, and we'd hug each other and everyone would think, wow. this is a great reunion. Yes. And then we'd go out and he would point to the stars and I would point to the sky and everybody would look and there was nothing to see. We loved that too. <laughs> We had a lot of fun together. You had a little difficult childhood, I think. We had a lot of fun. But we don't have a time for all that. So, so, so this is, now, now the question is why does he say that? And I'm beginning to understand. Um, when he came to live with me at the University of Chicago. He came to live with you? Yes, yeah, during when summers. You were in, when I was in Chicago. I had one room the size of this room. Oh. And he came and we shared the room. And he had done that many times before, but less long. And he'd come from Antioch. And it was... Did he go to Antioch? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, my brother did too. Oh, I am. The same brother who I told that he was dead to me. Yes. That, that might, brother. Might my brother next, Bobby. The next... The, con the, con the, the central next, point is Antioch. The next story. Mm -hmm. And so he comes to live with me. And I find it so hard to be close to anybody, really, but close to him. I think now when I look back on it, we were both so lonely because we were both brutalized by our parents. Mm. And we loved each other. And men didn't do this. They didn't hug then and say, well, I love you. And so really afraid of that energy, me, I... He hatched the plan. No, I just felt he didn't have to plan then. He was just 21 then. Oh. I, was, you know, I was 30. But I think that energy, I mean, I even remember going places to him because I'm repressing this energy. Thank God for the gay movement. And I'm repressing this energy. This is how we understand it. And I need to just touch any woman who's online if we're waiting on a bus line just to bump into her. Oh, you could get in trouble I for that. In trouble, I, but I, I, you could, I know someone who got in trouble. I needed it so Turkish bad. guy who pinched somebody on the bus. Yeah, I, I was more subtle. I was just, oh, good. It was crowded. And so I really couldn't stand to be with this young man who loved me who loved me like a father and mother. And I, I, um, and I even used to tell him, Scott, you're a great man. And he was just hurting mm. so much. And I said, a great man. And, and we would have ways to, to I say, great men. Um, I forget what we would do. I would, I, when he was, he once. Great men don't cry. He once was on the street and uh, 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 um, a, a beggar asked him, you got a quarter? And, For, to him? Yeah. And Scott said, are you asking me or demanding of me? And the guy just hit him. Wow. But Scott was a good guy. And when the charges came up, he decided to drop them. Because the guy... And steal all your money. That, yes, that was... That was when he decided, Mikey. He thought if a quarter could lead to that much violence, oh, I... that a whole inheritance could. would give him all the violence he, he could deal with in his whole life. Well, he, he, had, he, he stopped talking to us. After he told me, you've, you've lied, we, I wrote him, my bro other brother wrote him. Oh, let me tell you how we got the money, though. How, how did you get the money back? So he had the money, and he thought there was nothing we could do about it. That's what he told me. How come he didn't spend it or take it out and put it in his pocket? Well, he kept it in his own fund in Fidelity. It was pl this was happening very quick. He might have been deciding soon to move to India. Mm. But he thought there was nothing we could do. He yeah. legally had power over it. Mm. So I didn't know what to do. I didn't care about money. Mm -hmm. I fortunately had a student in my comparative religion class. Religion school. Oh, 
was yes, a lawyer. There is some religion that is money. And she says, don't let him take it. It's not fair to him or to you. Oh, she was a very smart comparative so I was, religion student. to her, and I was very dumb, and I called his lawyer. His lawyer? And I said, will you represent me? <laughs> so I don't know. That was stupid. Yes, thank you. And I, 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 and then I asked, tell you. And then I asked, okay, he said he wouldn't, he couldn't. And he, I said, do you, could you recommend anybody? And he said, yeah, I have a buddy. <laughs> He recommended yeah, somebody yeah, else. Very, very. And I called another person who said he'd be happy to recommend, he'd be happy to work for me and be paid. But the only thing he could do was send a stiff letter to my brother saying he had responsibilities to use that money to care for my mother. Wow. So? I didn't think that would be worth the paper it was written on. Oh. So I started looking for another lawyer, even though I said, that sounds fine. I felt conflicted because I told him I liked him. And a woman doing care for my mother, my mother knew 24-7. And I just asked her, do you know any lawyers in Sarasota? And she says, my husband was an estate lawyer for 40 years in Chicago. Wow. And that's locked up. That's all he did. And he's mm -hmm. retired now, but I, I'll ask him if he'll represent you. Wow. And he, he says he would as long as it doesn't go to trial. Mm -hmm. as if, if I could find someone. And, and he recommended someone who said I'd be happy to take us to trial. Oh. And when you get a pro, Mm. Like yourself, of course. I know. When you get a real pro. Like that happened to me when I got hit on my bicycle. We might get there because I'm almost finished. And when you get a pro. Mm -hmm. um, Go in, and tell pro. In, in, in any profession, a, a great yes. therapist, a great teacher, a great TV personality. Mikey, you better be quicker. Okay. So the pro, this is what the pro did. Yes, what did the pro He got my mother's primary care physician in a room. Mm -hmm. My, my uh, middle brother, my psychiatrist brother, flew down. Had a few friends of my mother. And he, and the, um, he asked her, do you know what's going on now? And she said, yeah, I knew this happened in people's families, but I didn't think it would happen in mine. Wow. And so the, her primary care physician said, competent city. Competent city, so he recompetent. Yeah, you can do that. There's, there's something in the law called moments of lucidity. Oh, so she had a moments of lucidity. Yes, yeah, she, yeah, she really was pretty aware all the time. Oh. And so then the pro had her sign two sentences. What? Yeah, what were they? The first sentence was, I declare that everything I've seen. Did you ask her who was president? No, he had, they, once she said that she knew she knew this happened, they knew she was competent. Oh, that's enough. That was enough. She knew it. You was don't even right. have to know who's president. No, nope. you know. Wow. So we're lucky. And by then it was probably George Bush. Uh, by then, no, not, then it was still Bill Clinton. Oh. And so the first sentence is everything I've signed up till now is null and void and she signs it with her little Parkinson's handwriting Evelyn D. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. the second sentence is I am setting up a trust with my with me and my three three sons and the trust cannot be amended unless I and two sons agree and she signs it again. Wow. And the lawyer calls me immediately and says call your brother and tell him he can't touch the money because he no longer has power over it. Wow. So I called Scott. But why didn't he just take the money out? Whatever he no, said, possession is no, nine times the law. No, no, no. The money was infidelity under Scott's account. Uh -huh. Scott's so, account. But could the lawyer freeze the yes, account? Yes, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, that see. money was frozen. Ah. And, he couldn't, and the lawyer knew that immediately. He just called and told fidelity. He knows how to do this. Yes. And so I call Scott, he says, I don't want to talk to you, leave a message on the phone. And I leave the message, that I don't touch the money, because you can't, it's frozen, and it's going back to mom in this restaurant. Wow. So what, what happened? Did he call you? He never called me. He's never gotten in touch with anybody in the family, cousins, nieces, nephews. Wow. And I've sent him gifts, and he sent them back saying, I'll only open them in the presence of a therapist, a policeman, and a lawyer. Wow. So he's really... You have an intense family. I'm taking a deep breath. 
just being this close to your family. And this is my last thing I'm going to say. I mean, hurry up. Yeah. So, um, so I we forgive him. Even my psychiatrist brother forgives him too, because he really he didn't succeed. Yes, we don't. And and we I loved him very much. I really loved him. It's my young kid brother. I told my brother he was dead to me. And I, well, I apparently I'm dead to Scott. And so I used to tell the story, hoping Scott would call and be. But I don't anymore. I, I. Well, you could send him a copy of the story. He he, he wouldn't anything I send to him. If I'm in it, I'm sure he'll have recognized me as a famous television yeah. personality. So I no longer expect him to uh -huh. get in touch with us. I mean, this is now 16 years. 16 years? Yeah. Wow. What does Scott do? He must be a lawyer himself. He was a funeral insurance salesperson. Funeral insurance? Oh, he, he was dumb. He, was, he had a PhD, too, in comparative religion. PhD in dumbery. And... And so now I, I, we really do forgive him, but what, in telling this story, I can feel now my, my own responsibility for, you know, leaving him and going to Israel. Mm. When we were living together, I said, I can't, I didn't tell him this, but I said, I have to go because I couldn't stand living with him mm. because of these feelings yes. that I had of love, really. Mm. When Did I, he take over? Did he take over what? The apartment. When you yes, yeah, I, um, yeah, I left him with friends. I remember, because you couldn't even say I love you then easily to men to men. And so when I'm leaving, I knock on the door and he says, yeah. And I say through the closed door, I say, I love you, Scott. I love you. Wow. And that was the last communication. That was um, pretty much well, no, the we, last we, face to we, face. Last face. No, no, we saw each other after. Oh, that. you did. Because this happened. Is he still a funeral insurance salesman? He, Is he I still he married was. to the Indian lady? Yes, yes. And he's wow. still alive. He's in. Do you have children? No, they never had. He's in the suburbs of Columbus, Ohio. I'm happy to know where he is. Columbus, Ohio. Wow. <laughs> and. Um, I mean, he's long been forgiven by us. I'm not sure. I wish he would forgive himself. And I'm very happy in telling this story to you. And I told it to Playback Theater a week ago. And to feel my love for him again. It's, you know, that very primal love for a younger brother. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really happy to feel it. And I can adopt people. We can be brothers oh. with this love. And I, I don't think I'll, I'll get any response from him in this lifetime, but there's many lifetimes to come. And it's wonderful to feel, with tears, telling the story, my love for Scott and my... Scott, yes! And my de desire to adopt many brothers and sisters. Right, and in the love. next lifetime you can tell them to beam me up, Scotty. I, I, I could, or you, you could help me. So I will. I will. will. Let's take a well, deep then. breath. <sighs> it's very helpful for me to take responsibility for um, the pain he feels toward me because I left him. very good for me to see that when I okay. told the story last time someone said why did people, people do this and I found the answer because they're hurt because I hurt them oh you hurt them I hurt him by, by leaving so abruptly and, mm. and, and mm. well my father told us to communicate better with each other and I said I would as long as I can be intellectually honest which meant criticizing him because I was 10 years older so I didn't get it mm. what was most important was uh, the you know, love flowing between us I didn't mm. know those things well now you know yes well Scott if you're out there take a deep breath because there's still time in this lifetime, because maybe there aren't other lifetimes.
And you could wonder what you should do. Well, pick up the phone and call the studio right now because this program is going to be archived and Mikey will stand by non-negotiably and wait until you call because he just had his birthday and as a birthday present I ask you to call him because he's still holding on to this. No, I'm not holding on to He anymore. is no. still holding. Yes, no. he is. He is. I'm, I'm he is. love other people. Oh, okay. Like my little brother. Oh, oh brother. Oh. Well, <clears throat> you've told the story now. Yes, thank you. I hope that makes you feel better. I, I have. Uh, it feels good. There's tears in my eyes. Good. But it's they're, they're, they're loving tears. And thanks for the love between us, Scott. Mm. And between us, Neil, and you and I. Mm. Yes, the old days. So this show is really a um, declaration, a covenant that Neil is now my younger brother. Yes, this. discovery is important, I agree. And practice, the practice of intention and intuition. You have to mean well and give the benefit of the doubt, which it sounds like you did, in good faith. Yeah. And you have to tell breathtaking truth. Yes, I think this to BFFs. I think this was to what well, we're running out of time. We are.